welcome back guys it's been an unnecessary international break but boy am i glad we're back and spanish football delivered yet again oscar junior lopetegui is on sack watch at the moment is this still is this still at sevilla right now yeah i mean he's been on sack watch since before the season started so yeah i feel i feel a bad result on against dortmund and his out at this point because yeah. The fans are visibly booing now, and it's not even funny. Like, we've had old presidents fighting against new presidents. We, we might get a riot case soon where the president of Sevilla is appearing with a bandage on his nose or something. So, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not, I mean, it's a funny matter for us, but it's not funny at Sevilla right now. They just, they just look, they just look it's sad, man, seeing them like this. Yeah. It is extremely sad. And watching that game against Atleti, Atleti I, felt, I felt Atleti were great. But, and in the second half, I just felt I was a bit disappointed with Atleti because Sevilla were so poor in that defensive transition that I felt Atleti could have, they could have had four or five goals if they wanted to. Yeah, I mean, Atleti did have chances after two minutes, just that um, Bono was able to repel Griezmann in particular and Cunha. But yeah, the thing is, Atleti, for this game, they changed their system to a far at the back. And I was struggling all game to find out if Atleti are more solid, or is it just because they are playing against Sevilla and Sevilla are just that bad at, at everything? Like, it's a weird paradox. So the only answer to that question is if Atleti pass the Jude Glatt test. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way. I mean, Rude, but... I mean, let's be honest, Rude yeah. will provide more of a challenge than what Sevilla are doing now. Yeah, that, 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 that's quite sad, but, but that's true. And I was impressed by the Spanish quartet. I know Sao won't get the plaudits that Llorente gets for the goal or Coke mm -hmm. for the assist, or Morata for his goal, but I felt Sao had an impression of Yeah, yeah this, this felt was... like the old Sao that usually played in left or right midfield it was energetic and this it was encouraging from a neutral perspective because I really like Saul a lot to see him play well. Yeah. And, and how do you think the introduction of Vitzel in that defensive midfield position helped to bring out the best of Saul, Llorente and Koke? Because it was somewhat of a 4-1-3-2 in a way. And mm -hmm. these three players were amazing. Yeah, basically. If you notice, all three of them played in their right positions for once. Because yeah. they because basically Koke wasn't forced to be an auxiliary DM. He could go forward and show his quality in attack. Lorente had the right back playing behind him so he could attack. Saul basically had the, like a free hybrid role that he usually excels at. And Vitzel was just holding everything down, repelling every severe attack. Yeah, speaking of which, the meta what the metaphor I have for this game is basically. Um, a little fly just coming at you and then you're just swimming it away. That's what Atleti was doing to Sevilla all game. And I feel like Vitzel was a huge part of that. Yeah, he, he definitely was. And I want to give a word for Llorente because this is his first goal since May 2021. And it just like the sacrifice this guy puts because I feel he's been hurt in the year that Atleti didn't have Trippier. And mm -hmm. The season now that Molina is there, maybe we'll see the year until we saw in 2020-21. Yeah, definitely. A bunch of things by playing out of position and then not having Trippier who understood how to get the best out of Lorente really hurt him. So it's be interesting to see how well he can do, how much he can get into goal scoring positions because goals from midfield are really something Atletico could do with. Yeah, it is. And let's talk about Koke because it was a special game for him. Mm -hmm. 554 appearances, the most, uh, the, the athletic player with the most appearances so far. Is, he, is Koke on the race today? Because it feels like the athletic fans don't really value him the way they should for a player who's clearly a club legend. Yeah. I mean, I've always been a fan of the, I've always been on the side that Koke is underrated generally. Based on his on last year's performance, which was a substantial drop off from the title winning season, I wouldn't say he's underrated. I'd say he he's overhated rather. I feel that's a better word <laughs> because it's not like yeah. he's not like he's terrible or anything. Like he 
he's he, he do, he's commits he's very committed he does a lot of sacrifices for it because if you remember he used to play as a winger before but then to accommodate other players he's gone central and yeah. today and it's good on the special day he was able to really help the team yeah it was and there was a player who wasn't really um part of the game he came on for three minutes i'm talking about joe felix and i really want to go in on him can i <laughs> Uh, go ahead. <laughs> oh man, like this guy has annoyed me so far this season. I know he had a brilliant first game, but since then it's just been it's, it's been average. And the thing is, I feel Joe Felix feels that he's too big for Atletico Madrid. He feels that Atletico Madrid is a stepping stone. He should be the star. What he did in the Madrid derby was unacceptable. If you come off the bench and you go walk to the changing room, that's unacceptable. And I feel Simeone dealt with it the right way and treating mm-hmm. him like. He was a youth player. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think, and you, you might disagree with me, but I don't think he's played at that level to be treated as a star. I know there'll be some people who would have a different opinion and they'll say maybe he doesn't fit Simeone, but Antoine Griezmann did. Yeah. Similar level of player. We look at Samuel Lino for Valencia. You look at Richard Calme, who scored an amazing goal for Girona. And you wonder whether they could come into this team and do a better job than Joe Felix. Because mm-hmm. against Sevilla, they, they played really well without him. You barely noticed that he was on the bench. They didn't really need him. Mm-hmm. And I'm just thinking maybe has time run out for him at Atletico Madrid. Maybe he's holding the club back rather than the other way around. Well, you really went to the deal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this was harsher than I expected. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, first, I agree. You know my thoughts on Felix. Basically, I'm like, forget whether Simeone is holding you back or Atletico is holding you back. I'm like, you have to stop holding yourself back first when you're playing against teams that are not as soon. <laughs> now, okay, on a serious note. Yeah, what he did in the derby was not good at all. And I'm glad to see that Simeone... Uh, punishing is a hard one because he's not a child exactly, but you know, dealt with it the right way. And he should learn from it and realize that he's not, if he thinks he's a star or he can be the star, you're not the star yet. You have to make yourself undroppable, indispensable. And you do that with a good attitude and with good performances. And so, f- and this season, the good performances certainly haven't been there except for the first game. So we'll see how this evolves. Maybe. Maybe we are being harsh and he was just being rested. But if I know Simeone, I think Felix is going to have to do a lot to get back into the team. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And let's let's talk about Sevier for a bit. We already mentioned that the repeated problems they have, they have problems defensively. But I felt the one player who stood out for, for me was Kasper Dolberg. He was able to drive into the athletic midfield, was able to create some issues, but he was alone in that game. Yeah. It's like, I looked at the lineup. The lineup I don't told me that Sevilla were going to get hammered. It's just, I felt it was down to Atletico, just to how many did score. Because if you look at the lineup, really, like, compared to how they used to line up last season, it's a, it feels like a relegation team. Yeah. I mean, I get, really I guess Salas and Carmona are like youngsters and everything, but. Against Atleti, I mean, you're not going to expect them to do much. And then instead of Fernando, you have Goodell. And the quality is just not there. Like, Dahlberg was uh-huh. good and he was alone because everyone else is just not good enough at the moment. Yeah, and the, the goal is like the second goal is just the lack of like the core mistakes, the lack of confidence. Yeah. You can tell that this team, they need a change somehow. I don't know whether it's the change of coach. I like Lopetegui, but you really can defend him at this point. I feel his sporting director let him down. Maybe mm-hmm. a new president might be needed. Maybe they might need a psychologist. They need something to really change the squad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the thing is that the loss of two centre-backs, no matter how good they are, should not mean that the whole team is suddenly bad. Like, yeah. And we get and, that and, there and were I- deeper problems last season that maybe a good defense mask, but this is like, the players also need to look at themselves too, because a lot of them 
are way better and the rubbish, for lack of a better word, the rubbish they're putting out every week. Yeah, yeah. But we've gone in on Joe Felix, we've gone in on Sevilla. <laughs> Uh, shall we go on it? Shall we go on going on Real Madrid? And yes, they, yes, they're, they're, yes. Not, they're not perfect anymore, they're not invincible. They, they dropped yes. off soon now. What's up? Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, I just want to say I'm really pleased with this result, and yeah, and um, Real Madrid they came up against a team that was uh, really, really brave against them, not as soon as. They had a good number of chances themselves. Real Madrid also had chances and couldn't take them today. And yeah, they finally met a stumbling block, which is encouraging from my perspective. Yeah, and even Benzema, Benzema, the future Ballon d'Or, he he missed against Sergio Herrera, who for the third time this year. Ben, yeah, yeah, it's sort of Benzema's <laughs> arch arch rival. Actually, to be honest, it's not just Herrera. If you remember. Benzema missed against the two earlier this year when he had three penalties in the game and scored two. He also missed yeah. against Agabadia. So all of it, it's funny because normally Benz is a good penalty taker, but this year all of his misses have just come this year. And yeah, that it's mistakes like this that it's the mistake that, that like that that caused them against Osasuna because I was I was willing to bet everything that if they went ahead, the 10 men won't have come back. So no, yeah, it's a it good point. <laughs> yeah, it's a good, it's a very good point for Sasuna and a terrible, uh, a terrible way to lose three points for Real Madrid. Yeah, but for Barcelona, it's an amazing point because that puts them top of table for the first time since 2020. If I'm, it's correct. been that long. <laughs> it's been that long. Uh, I used to pray for times like this. <laughs> and, and and with this game like the, with the injuries like the FIFA virus has caused I know you want to go in on FIFA we'll allow you to do that uh, no, it's but okay I, I, I've gotten really that well. out of my system <laughs> I've gotten FIFA out of my system really well. yeah and yeah, it Lewandowski was... his goal was world class yeah he basically invented that win for us with that goal because there was no way, like breaking that Mallorca team down through ordinary methods was not going to work because they were really, really good. Or they were really, really organized. And even though they had 28% possession, you wouldn't have thought that because they went for that space a lot of the time. It was like they sensed, okay, we're playing against a team that has two center backs that haven't played as much this season. A, le a left back doesn't play as much this season and the left back at right back. So. They really went forward a lot, but they just didn't have the lucky break they could have had once or twice. Yeah. And and also I felt like Ter Stegen was amazing in this game with some of the saves he made, for example, denying Kami Costa, like he was brilliant. Yeah. The old Ter Stegen is back and he's, he might be better than ever, who knows, because he, he's only 534 minutes streak without conceding La Liga. The last person that scored against him is no longer here too, so <laughs> hopefully it continues as long as possible. Yeah, what changes are studying? Because I remember last season and the season before, it seemed like every shot was a goal. Yeah, I feel, you know, like he's had two, he's, he's missed the start of the last two seasons with a knee problem that he's yeah. had to do surgery for twice. I don't know if it's the same knee or different knees, but I feel like participating in the preseason and just getting his confidence back because he had a good second half of last season. I feel like gradually he's got his confidence back and he feels like the old Ter Stegen. He has his hairline back too now. Maybe that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but, but, but it just shows, it just shows what, what confidence can bring because I remember Thibaut Courtois went through something similar yeah, uh, his last Chelsea and his first season at Real Madrid, and mm -hmm. just gaining that confidence. And I feel just starting right now, he's he's at his zenith because he's doing so well. I know there'll be tougher tests in the league and in the Champions League, but at the moment, we have to give credit where credit is due. And maybe he might win the Zamora for the first time this season. Barca I think he's won it before. He has won. Oh, yeah, I stand yeah. corrected. Yeah. <laughs> 
Don't do my bird yeah. dirty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Barca have Inter Milan next. How, how do you see this defense going up against Lautaro, Lukaku, Correa, and all of Inter's great stars? Uh, okay, I think at least against Inter Roberto, since he's the only available right back who play, and the defense will have a more natural balance to it. Yeah, I mean, Inter haven't been exactly great recently, but the quality is there to hurt us. I just feel we're going to have to rely more on our attack in the next this month because yeah. it's not that defense is not going to get away with it every game. So hopefully Lewandowski, oh. Fatih, and everyone can be fired, can be firing all cylinders. Yeah, and do you start Eric Garcia? I can't believe I'm saying this, but like Eric Garcia <laughs> seems like a safe bet compared to PK. Yeah, definitely. I PK was the right choice in this game because we're playing against Mariki, who is a beast in the air. So it's better to have PK, who's also tall. Against Inter, yeah, I definitely start Eric Garcia for the fact that he and Christensen have played together more and they seem to have a good relationship. So I start Eric and Christensen. And I'd also start two of them, you know, classical if both are fits. I can't believe I'm saying yeah. that too. <laughs> How <laughs> things have changed. Oh, yeah, it really has. So Classico is in two weeks. Also in two weeks is another historic clash, Athletic versus Atletico, which would be interesting because Athletic are in tremendous form right now. The William brothers are just killing it in La Liga. Yeah, the Williams brothers are having the fun of their lives, both on the club and international stage. Oye and Sunset, too, is also having a great oh, time. He's, yeah. he's a damn man. <laughs> Wow, basically, yeah, he's like sitting like an attacking midfielder suddenly playing CM and just controlling things, arriving in the box, making good runs. Like the way Valverde has just transformed Athletic from the Marcelino days is just really refreshing to see. Not that Marcelino was bad. Marcelino, in Inaki Williams' words, basically gave them a base to be an organized team and then Valverde is just extracting that end product that we all knew could be there from these players. But for some reason, it was just deep, deep inside. Now it's out and they're one of the most fun teams to watch in the league. That said, I think a team like Atleti will definitely show what they're made of compared to Almeria, who are not it right now. No, no. And then... It's interesting because they're the next level of games they have is against really high quality opponents, like mm-hmm. the best of the best. I believe they have Atleti, Barca, Villarreal, Getafe coming up. So that'll be a big test for this athletic club. And yeah, for sure. with, with Valverde, we think it's changed because they take more they take a lot more shots, right? Mm-hmm. So is it just a change in approach that that's why they score more goals or do you think that positional, positional change for Sunset is the key? I feel it's a bit of both. Because, first of all, the fact is, if you take more shots, you're going to have more chances to score. And also with Sunset, Sunset is a player that has a lot of quality to play as a striker. But then if, you, if you're taking him into midfield and you're putting another attack-minded player ahead of him, that's definitely a change in like attacking approach and so this whole mindset about around athletic is that we're a team that wants to attack instead of just you know keeping things tight and everything. Okay. Yeah, and Almeria, um, we is this time we start worrying about them because since I think the left, they haven't scored a goal. I mean, I basically uh, we did a pod about predictions, right? Yeah, I basically said if he leaves, they're going to finish dead last because there's really nothing else there and. It's, it seems like, unfortunately, I'm right, because there's really nothing else. He scored the last goal that they have in La Liga, and that was in August. So unless Ruby can get something out of the rest of his team, he might be out of a job soon, thanks to the, I'll, I'll say, incompetence of his board. Because if you're selling Sadiq, I believe you should have done it earlier and just had everyone move on instead of setting him right at the end of the window. Yeah. Well, Sadiq's new club doesn't need him either because it <laughs> doesn't need him at all because they're, they're scoring goals for fun. 
without him. And what a masterpiece the Shiona Rios said was. It's it was such a brilliant game. The goals that we saw, the moves, the like drama. It's it encapsulates all that's good about La Liga this season. Yeah, and there was no red card to all like the other games. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it's, it, yeah. It's basically. Like uh, last season, Real Sociedad had struggled to find goals. They were doing everything else right. We yeah. often put down that lack of goal down to bad finishing from Isak and Sorlot. But you could also say their approach last season was more about ball retention instead of actively creating good chances. But now, with this new formation, they have you have David Silva playing at a high level again. You have. Take Kubo playing at a high level. You have Bryce Mendes playing at a high level. You have Marino and Zubrendi playing at a high level too. And Sorlot is finally getting quality chances and he's showing that he can be a guy that can score maybe 10 plus goals in the league and more in yeah, all competitions. Budget talent. <laughs> yeah, budget basically, talent. Bu- basically budget talent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because but, but, he scored three times in a row and Take Kubo has assisted him three times in a row. So that's a pretty encouraging partnership. Yeah, and I want to talk about Girona too, because they also, they played some some good stuff as well. Uh, you know, I'm a fan of Roro Riquelme, so I'm going to yeah. shout to my son podcast. He scored a golasso. And you're a fan of Tati Castellanos, and he also, he also scored. So it seems like maybe for Girona, the defending was more of the issue, or shall I say the goalkeeping was more of the issue for them, because I'm not convinced by Girona's goalkeeper. Yeah. Um, Juan Carlos, I don't think he's La Liga level. So it's, like, it's kind of like the same way I look at Fernando at Almeria and our boy Manolo Reina last season. <laughs> Manolo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in terms of options um, for a substitute goalkeeper, um, Gatsaninka is a, an experienced enough top flight goalkeeper in the Premier League. So, and I think he was at Elche two seasons ago, so maybe they can try him. Um, the other option would be Tony Fuidas, but he's pretty young, so I don't know if that will be the right option, but definitely they could look at the goalkeeper for a bunch of the goals today. Today, for sure. Uh, the other good thing of note from this game was Carlos Fernandez gets him back into uh, into action. Because Isak has, been, Isak has a long-term injury after the season, I feel this is such an important piece of news for El Sociedad if they are yeah. to challenge maybe even for the Champions League this season. Yeah. For sure, with uh, Faba and Real Sociedad is a club that has had terrible luck with injuries. Like, all the injuries have been long-term. So with uh, Faba out, Sadiq out, Isak leaving, they definitely need more and more people to step up to the plate. And Carlos Fernandez, if you can recapture his form in 1920 with Granada, where he got 11 goals and I think five assists, and that would be really helpful for Real Sociedad's aspirations. Yeah, a game that tried to compete with this game was Hetafe via the league. I made the dumb decision of going to play soccer instead of watching this game. <laughs> and Oscar, uh, tell us about this masterpiece by two teams you don't expect to play beautiful football. Yeah, <laughs> that's the, this was the shock of the weekend for La Liga fans. <laughs> But yeah, um, basically, River, they, they, got the, they had their shooting boots on for once, and Sergio Leon scored a brace, his first brace since 2016. Like, he's, like, you know, he's proving up to be a good option while Wise, Wiseman is still getting his feet back from his injury, and he's definitely a better option than Sergio Guardiola. And overall, I thought River, the this midfield, in this game was very good. Kike Perez and Roque Meza, Aguado, they were all excellent. Plano too. On Hetafe's side, they were also great at, at attacking wise. It's just that their defense, Jene in particular, let them down because Damian Suarez, even though he's a defender, was really good in this game. Yeah, he's um, quite a good one. He's got a really good chip. But Mayoral hasn't had the best of seasons and he got out the night this game. Well, now he didn't score, but he was very involved in everything that Tafi was doing. So overall, all these teams made for a really good game. And also there was a penalty, and your boy Enes Yunel, what happened? Uh, goodness. Why did you remind me? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, don't give Turkish players penalties. 
<laughs> don't miss them. <laughs> like Wait, I was, this, I was. This in this one in Nations League, I think. Yeah, it was the Nations League. No, it was a walk up qualifier against oh, Portugal. Qualifier, yeah. Yeah, and um, Barack Yilmaz blazed it over the bar against <laughs> Portugal. I'm like, let him now take it, but then he'll now let me down. I mean, to be, to be fair, he has scored penalties before and he has scored a free kick this season. So I believe that should cancel it out. Yeah. And Masik played instead of Asenko. That's something that we've been calling for. Mm-hmm. How was Masip in, Masip in this game? No, Masip was pretty. I mean, at this point, he could have just stayed still and have been better than Asenko. Like, to basically don't do anything <laughs> wrong and you're better than Asenko. Yeah. <laughs> because these little mistakes that Real Valdez have been making all season is what has caused them points. And Masip was really solid in goal. And it looks like he's going to be the starter for the foreseeable future. Yeah, that's good. And it's good that Hitafi, or I'm sorry, Valdez seem to have a, a very strong goalkeeper. A team that will blame their goalkeeper for dropping two points is Espanyol. And that that last minute goal, like what was he thinking? <laughs> that was crazy, man. It's like that like Chomer just get get tries to get contact on it and he's going somewhere. He's like, oh, I'm going to leave this. And as he leaves, yeah. it, he looks at like, oh, no. yeah. then, man, I mean, I Espanol are the new Mallorca this is in terms of having two sets or a set of terrible goalkeeper keeping performances because. <laughs> You had like Comte against Real Madrid who just decides to whack Ceballos. <laughs> and then you have Alvaro who has just made a mistake, a blatant error for a second goal. And some people could argue for ahead of the first goal, he could have done better. So yeah, Espanyol denied of a first home win, but at least they got their first home points. Yeah, at least. And this game was, it was quite an interesting game. It was very back and forth, especially in the second half. Hoselu scored a Lewandowski type goal, like same sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, without the agility. Valencia, without, without the agility, of course. <laughs> Valencia, I feel they'll be happy with this point because. Yeah, they'll be delighted with the point well. because at a point they got, they were sent off, they had a man sent off, a stupid sending off, by the way. I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah. you don't do that with Gatusu as your manager. <laughs> <laughs> and then thankfully they got it for them they got a lucky break as Brett was also sent off in his brother's silly way and then to win the game later on and almost have a chance to sorry to draw the game later on almost have a chance to win the game later on I feel like they won't they won't be disappointed that they went behind in the first place no no they definitely won't uh, now we're done with the crazy games so- or normal games we have in La Liga, Celta versus Betis. Again, another, I thought this game was, Vega scored a brilliant goal, but this game was sort of killed by a stupid red card by Luis Felipe. Yeah, basically, he's been doing last ditch defending a lot this season and it caught up to him this time. Yeah, and silly red card. Betis, as you, on a whole, were terrible in the first half, but surprisingly for a team with 10 men in the second half, the Rigi, took the game to Celta and had numerous chances to score, but Marquezin was pretty brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. That's just like they, they were really convincing. And Celta, on the other hand, I feel they lack a bit of concentration when they go ahead mm-hmm. or when they're in games. They're, they're unable to like have two full sets of performances mm-hmm. put together. Yeah, it's always like, it's a good performance, but you know. But to be fair to them, if they had chances too to kill the game, but they were yeah. uncharacteristically, uncharacteristically terrible at finishing their chances. Yeah, let's talk about Gabby Vega for a moment because he's been like a standout player, not only for Salta but in La Liga. Like, if he keeps playing the way he is, it's going to be very difficult for Salta to keep hold of him. Yeah. They, it's it's been very hard, but hopefully he can stay there for a while and help them out. You know, it, it feels like this is another option that's basically like we don't need Dennis Suarez anymore. We have other people that are willing to, <laughs> that are ready to, to step up to the plate. And yeah, yeah, it's overall, I feel it's a good performance for Celta without Aspas for most of it. 
because that has always been something that we've always been concerned about them like yeah. what happens if fast pass isn't there yeah what happens and i think we're done with la liga oh wait well we have one again yeah cadiz via real uh we're, we're um nothing really happened with zero zero just kidding um I, actually this game wasn't as bad as the scoreline yeah, it wasn't as bad. But that's their problem, isn't it? They've drawn. Yeah. They've they've not won three games on the spinning La Liga, and I feel they deserve to win all three games if they took their chances. Yeah, I feel so. So I, I saw a graphic from La Liga the Zone that showed that Villarreal are the most wasteful team in La Liga in that they created about twenty two. They, they've missed 22 clear occasions, which was seven more than Barcelona, 10 more than Athletic, 10 more than Osuna. So they, they've missed the most clear occasions in La Liga yeah. this season. Yeah. yeah. It's down to what's holding them back right now is a, an extreme amount of wastefulness. And I don't want to be hard. I, this will sound harsh, but I feel Emery is overplaying Nico Jackson. Let me put it that way because he's 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 really talented and he scored already this season. But you can tell he feels like he needs to score another one soon because he's gone without a goal for one. I feel like maybe you could rest the kid and Dan Juma is back at least. Maybe he can take the burden off him. And then also, I feel he's not playing Morales enough because Morales could do better with some of the chances that the team as a whole has been wasting. Yeah, he definitely could. I agree with you. And for Cadiz, a good point. Another thing to gain confidence. Yeah, it was a better performance of all from them. It wasn't like before the River the game that they were just putting in pathetic performances. This one was more like the Cadiz that stayed up against the odds last season. Yeah. And this is something that... Is going to be a new segment. Who do you think is the standout player for this week? And who's the standout team for this week? Standout player. I'm going. I'm, I was going to say Sergio Leon, but I'm going to say Take Kubo. I can't one. believe I'm saying team. that. <laughs> standout, yeah. standout team. I'll give it to Real Valdo because they played against their. I, they play against a, a possible rival for relegation and they beat them. They're now level on points with them. And they've created a gap with the chasing pack at the bottom three with Elche, Cadiz, and Almeria. So I'll say they're the team of the week. Nice, nice. And with that, let's move on to the Premier League where there were two big city derbies. We're going to start with the Demolition Derby. I saw <laughs> City tear apart United. Holland gets in a hat trick, Foden gets in a hat trick. Wow, you thought things were getting better for United, right? I thought things were getting better. <laughs> Me? This is my, this is my, like, ever since 2019, I'll tell a small story of why I'm so harsh on my United. Because my family likes my United, I basically partial, I basically like them and saw them as my favorite English team. So, you know, during the years of like, post Fergie with all the suffering and everything. There's always one constant thing my United will do. Play bad for a while, go on a mini run of form where you think they're getting back and then stop. <laughs> and it's the same thing over and over again. Where it's where the, the straw that broke the camels back for me was after that PSG comeback in 2019. I, I was like, yes, all these are the wheel, everything. But then <laughs> After they, their last 14 games of the season, they only won two, and those two games were, they were outplayed in both games by Watford and West Ham. Like, a season where everyone thought they could comfortably get top four, end up finishing Europe, and that was when I'm like, the standards at this club are just not good enough, no matter who they bring in. So for everyone who was like, oh, they beat Arsenal, they beat Liverpool, they're back, I was just lucky. And then Rissa said that happened, and now Man City has happened. So yeah, my United are not back or on the way to being back anytime soon. Yes, and you lost against the best team in the country and possibly the best team in the world, but the defending that to be four nil down at halftime is just again, because this is the second time this season. This is the second time this season they'll be four nil down at halftime. 
that does not look wow. like a team that's been back at all. So let's stop pretending that they're serious team in any sense. Rant over. Okay, I, I guess we're going in on everyone today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But on Holland, right? He scored 13 goals in eight games in, in for, England. For, uh, 14 or 13. Maybe 14. It's 14, 14, 14 yeah. 14 14, eight. Eight, 14 eight. That's crazy. It's almost a two, two goals per game. <laughs> <laughs> At this rate, this guy, this guy is going to put everyone that's like, oh, the Premier League, you can't do what you do in the Bundesliga here. It's an absolute shame because he never was this good in the Bundesliga. In the Bundesliga, he was a goal a game player. Now that's essentially doubled if you're counting the Champions League. Yeah, yeah, this guy, and this guy's a monster, and looks like he's going to have a mess with the 11 12 season where he scores like honestly. I'm like, Messi should be Messi should be looking over his shoulder. He's like, that record might look <laughs> like, a, like a joke at the end of the season, yeah. And it just like it, it's something that used to annoy me when Messi was in La League and was scoring those goals. And they're like, oh, oh, he'll never do it in the Premier League. Himself. Honestly, but, if Matt, if Prime Messi and Ronaldo in the Premier League did score, did score. 40, 40 would be a poor season for them, if I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, because in the Liga, like... goalkeepers, at least, they have some goalkeepers that usually frustrated them for like 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And, and this is supposedly like the best era of English football, and he's scoring, he's making it look like a joke. I mean, Man City, without a striker last season, won the league. What, without a striker for the last two seasons, I've won the league. Now they have a striker, so yeah, it's going to be Pep is just going to make this the next Bundesliga and next La Liga of the early 2010s and late 2010s. But wait, 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 wait. there's party, party. <laughs> I don't think you should. <laughs> uh... <laughs> 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 I say, I say. Yeah, there's our stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're there. They're, they're, they're top right now. We should give them credit for credit. Yeah, that's that, now. Yeah, that's now really had a good season. <laughs> Notwithstanding. <laughs> but yeah, they've really done well to be first in the table. They beat Tottenham, you know, and it's a very important game for them to beat their big rival. And how long they can hang with City, we'll have to see. But definitely, I think Arsenal are in a very, very strong position to finish at least third. Yeah, and credit where credit is to our boy, Thomas Pati, from La Liga boy, represents. Okay. He scored a brilliant goal. Yeah. Uh, Liverpool, though, this this left some issues there. Uh, yeah, Liverpool, they went to Neil down, did the terrible defending, came back, and then Terrible defending again, maybe three three. But yeah, Liverpool. I feel like if they if they had a slim chance of getting back into the title race, you know, it's getting slimmer every day. Every day. But do you think it's they could still be a threat in the Champions League to like other teams? If they if they get fun. their act together for sure in the Champions League, they can definitely be a team that because this is largely the same team that won that got to the final last season minus money but even then at least the one positive you can say Liverpool have is that Firmino is scoring goals again yeah so that's it <sighs> but let's move on to Serie A and another team in crisis is Inter Milan they lost to Roma and people talk about how bad Juventus have been but I, I believe Juventus are equal on points with Inter at the moment so entire that bad. Wow. Yeah. Have you yeah, so it's it's really shocking how bad Inter have been at the start of the season because you think like they improved on the squad for once instead of selling off their stars and then they've started this badly. So who knows how long the owners will be patient with Inzaghi. Yeah, and the Bala who wanted to come to Inter, but like they Sort of snapped him. He scored a goal in this game. Yeah, and did you see what the Syria um, Twitter page posted? Oh, Basically, no. oh, they, they? they posted a video where an Inter and Roma fan are close to each other, and then you have a Roma fan 
doing the the bala hand the, the bala celebration in the face of the interfan. Oh my god! <laughs> like, do you think this is a bit excessive? And yeah, for uh, for interfan to hurt seeing a player yeah. that could have come to you score against you on top of that is a former UV star. So yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but it's much better for Milan, although they needed some madness, absolute madness against Empoli. Yeah. Because Empoli equalized in the 90th minutes, and what do Milan do? They go on and score two goals. Yeah, that's basically Syria for you. Syria is not the league of absolutely late chaos. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's good that yeah. mm-hmm. it's good that Milan won and they're able to keep pace with Napoli, who are still doing amazing. Yeah, and, and let's not forget Atalanta. They're still they're, they're up there. Atalanta, Atalanta had a rather disappointing season last time, but this season it seems they've more, really gotten their act together. So personally, among all the teams, I'd like Napoli to win, but if Atalanta were able to, if Gasparini is able to win Syria, like just imagine how big it yeah. would be for a club like Atalanta. Yeah, it would be like Leicester winning in England. Or yeah, it would basically it would well maybe not like Leicester, but yeah, I feel it would be similar to Depor to Depor winning it because yeah. Atlanta have had have a lot of European experience. Now, yeah, that's very true. And let's move to the Bundesliga. And Bayern are back! Yay! After not winning for four games, like Bayern, they score four goals. Mane finally scoring in front of his own crowd and Musiala. Magic, yeah. The Bayer Leverkusen had a good result against Atleti some weeks ago, but now their the feelings of their bad season are back right now. And then they have, they kind of look forward to their game against Porto on Wednesday, I believe, which is must win. Yeah, it's a must win. And for Musiala, like, how do you rate him compared to? The likes of Pedri, Foden, uh, this Twitter argument. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Wait, Jauhu. Oh, I, I was just. <laughs> I, I joke, I joke. I, 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 I snuck him in as as the new one. You snuck him. Yeah, I miss me. Yeah, yeah, he's very talented. I don't want to miss Francis. <laughs> That's why I stopped. But yeah, he's a really <laughs> talented player, and it's really interesting to see how good he can get. Whether He's the safe bet to replace Müller long term when Müller eventually leaves Bayern. Because he's good as a ten, he can also play as an eight. He can. He's very comfortable playing either flank. So yeah, he's he's one for the future and the present. It seems. Yeah, for sure. And Dortmund, in the spirit of being Borussia Dortmund, they decided to lose and lose <laughs> before their class there. <laughs> I was going to say they decided to lose after being in the lead, but both work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Both I mean, work. And for, for the Klaska, do we have any hope that Dortmund do something? Is this just going to be another walkover for Bayern? Um, this the Klaska like is at the last... Dortmund Stadium, right? Yeah, I, I yeah. believe so. I mean, given how the teams that Bayern have had, the teams Bayern have had difficulty against have been teams that basically parked the bus against them. Dortmund are not going to do that at all, so I'm going to say Bayern win. Yeah, Bayern unless, Dor- unless Dortmund decides to do that. And, um, yeah. What's, what's the new other goalkeeper again? They keep changing goalkeepers. <laughs> Co- Kobel. Yeah. yeah, unless Kobel has a Kobel, complete... Yeah. Mad game like summer a few months ago. Uh, I can see Bayern winning this one. Yeah, I can see Bayern winning it as well. Um, on league on, did you see Messi's free kick? Uh, of course, well, of course, I saw Messi's free kick. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, I mean, he's he's number one fan on this yeah, pod, even back. though there are only two of us. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> oh, he has the thing, he has the thing. The question I want to put is, was he ever, I mean, he was, he's back scoring goals, but I believe that every other team he usually does well, he did well last season. It's just the goals weren't there. Yeah. But now, for club and country, this guy is on fire right now, and 
long may continue until PSG gets up. <laughs> oh, just in time for a World Cup. Well, is that a coincidence? But yeah, long may continue until I, PSG I gets into the round of 16 and then they exit again. <laughs> yeah, because I'll, I'll say I'll say thing for Messi. My like personal criticism of Messi is like I don't think he's done enough in the round of sixteen or and past that in the Champions League since twenty nineteen. Where in twenty nineteen I believe he had a strong Champions League campaign, but mm. since then I feel it's been. Well, since since then something. it's not since then it's not just been him. I mean, he's been Barcelona as a whole. Yeah, yeah. Bar- twenty 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 we got hammered. Twenty twenty one. We got hammered, but restored a little bit of pride. 2022, we weren't there at all, but he didn't play well at all against Real Madrid. So he has, I feel, and at this point, does he really have a point to prove? But if it's to you, then he has a point to prove to you. No, uh, like, like I would say, not, not to me. But, like, but if, yeah, it will be. In terms of winning the. In terms of winning the Champions League, he needs to put in stronger performances for sure. I absolutely agree. No, no don't get me wrong. Messi is the GOAT. I like absolutely agree. I know. I, I understand what you're saying, but. To Lewandowski, Benzema, yeah. I, yeah, definitely he needs to do more. In a, that, I feel like what he doesn't do enough in these big games anymore is actually get enough chances to make yourself score because. Lewandowski, Benzema, and the rest. Like, even though Benzema didn't play well, they had enough chances to actually score if he was yeah. able, if he was going to. So I feel that's something you can do. Like, make make that run, long busting run into the box to get on the end of something. Yeah, and I still feel like he's missed a bunch of, like, key chances because I remember in the game against PSG where he had a penalty and he missed. In the game mm. against Real Madrid, he had that penalty and he missed. Mm. And that's something that I feel he has to be more efficient. Because, like, you look at what Kylian Mbappe did to Real Madrid with that goal in the Parc de France, where it was mm-hmm. like, or Parc de France, whatever, where mm-hmm. like he cuts back two plays and he scores. Like, mm-hmm. that's sort of magic I used to expect from Messi, but maybe uh-huh. I should think that he's 34. He's mm. not, he can't do the things that he did when it was 23 or 26. Mm. No, that's that's the thing. So we'll see. Maybe I haven't really watched all of PSG's games this season, but I heard like his dribbling stats are up again because they were kind of down last season. So we'll see. Definitely, when PSG are playing the round of sixteen, they'll we'll definitely all watch that. So we'll see if yeah, he's but... back or PSG are just going to PSG again. But you know, Ligon is not a foregone conclusion because Marseille is so close. Mm-hmm. And also, there are two surprise challengers Lorient and Lance. Both yeah. of them are with four points off PSG. Yeah, and Lance are unbeaten. That's insane. Yeah, it's really, it's really, from a Ligon standpoint, it's very interesting to see that these teams are all close to them. And I feel I feel though a bunch, a couple of them will probably drop away. I feel Marseille, their performances have been good enough to keep them close enough to PSG uh, to make this interesting. Yeah, it's just in the Champions out, League. <laughs> when they drop out of the Champions League, they'll be more focused. I mean, don't get us wrong. We're not being here by say hitters, we're just saying the truth. Yeah. <laughs> their record speaks for itself. Uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe they finally beat, uh, they win in Champions League and they beat Sporting. Who knows? It's, it, yeah. it is a complicated that one. Yeah, but the way Sporting have played this season, I don't think my second do anything to stop them. Yeah, surprising. Sporting are a seventh or something in the Portuguese League. <laughs> and, they're, and they're killing them in the Champions League. It's it's funny. But yeah, yeah I, I think that's, that's it for us this week, guys. Don't forget mm-hmm. to like and subscribe. Oscar, see you next week. Thank you. And thank you for making me laugh with that. It's not AFTB song. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I haven't heard that song Pause in so long. I just, I just remembered how they used to show <laughs> That's why I was laughing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone, yeah. for that. I just remembered the show fleet and how they were like, wow, this is... Because I remembered back then, I was like, oh, he has retired from the Champions League. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they, I think they'll be back this season. Yeah. 
and they'll be back to losing 5 1 against Bayern. <laughs> yeah, Bayern can handle them now and leave us a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but with that, like, thanks, thanks, Oscar. Um, no problem. See you guys. <laughs>